Hi everyone, it's Monica, and welcome back to TaylorMade Cards for You. So welcome to part two of my tutorial on how to put together a passport book. Now, if you didn't uh, see the video yesterday, which was part one, you may wanna go back and take a look at that because that uh, was a uh, tutorial on how to put together the structure of the book. I showed you how to get to this point, essentially. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the three signatures and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on decorating your passport book. So let's go ahead and get started. But before I get too far into the video, I wanna remind you that today is my birthday and I will be having a giveaway at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around to the end um, so I can tell you what prizes I will be giving away for my birthday um, and how you can win them. All right, so as I indicated, the passport book has three signatures. Um, and within the signatures, I have pockets and tucks and folds um, to include your ephemera. And um, at the left side of the book, I did create a little pocket to hold a library card. Now, um, as I indicated before, I am going to be providing some kits um, that you can purchase and everything that I'm showing you here for the most part will be in the kit. So, um, the library card holder is something that I've created and then I use my punch to go ahead and cut the open tab at the top and then these little printables I get from Victoria Designs. And these printables are of course vintage library cards um, and they are just one piece that I've added to the uh, left side of the book on all of my passport books. So at this point, the structure of the book is pretty much complete. I put the little tuck um, on the right side and then I put the library card on the left side. Now we're gonna go ahead and start working on the signatures. Now these are the pages in the cards and a signature essentially is a group of pages. Um, the structure of the book has a set of three um, holes and um, then when you cut out the pages, the pages also have holes, holes within uh, the center of their um, fold, so that way you can attach them to the book. So what you're gonna wanna do is with all of your folds, you're gonna, go, gonna wanna go ahead and fold them in half, so that way all of your signatures are in half. And then you're gonna wanna determine um, which four pieces of paper will go in each signature. Now remember, you're gonna have three signatures, so you're gonna have 12 pieces of paper, um, and usually what I'll do is I'll get a thicker piece of cardstock for my outside piece, and then I'll find uh, three other pieces to go with, uh, within the middle of the uh, thicker piece. So as you can see, not every page has designs on the outside as well as the inside. Uh, but if you do want to add some sort of designer paper on the inside, um, all you need to do is take some cardstock um, and cut it a little bit smaller than your page um, and add it to the insert. Remember, you do have some holes that are gonna require some twine, so you don't wanna cover those holes. So you just wanna be careful when you are um, adding your designer paper that you take that into consideration. And then within some of the pages, I do like to add pockets. So um, I am using, again, my red line tape to add some pockets to the inside of one of the pages. Now within your book, you're gonna have different sizes of pockets, but I always like to have a uh, pocket um, that will fit a gift card because sometimes people like to give away these passport books and insert a little gift card. But of course, um, each pocket doesn't necessarily have to hold a gift card. It can hold a tag, it can hold some ephemera, um, it can hold any type of paper that you want it to. Um, so you wanna make sure that your pockets are sturdy enough to hold the paper that you're gonna be adding. And then I'm doing the exact same thing to the right side of the page. I'm gonna add some designer paper um, to go ahead and decorate the page. Now, I don't necessarily like to add the same paper um, on the inside, even though the outside of your page um, is the same design. Um, you can create different types of designs within the inside, um, and I like to mix and match my paper. Now remember, you don't need to necessarily add designer paper to every blank page. Some of those pages can be left blank um, because they're perfect to write a little note or even to stamp on. So don't feel that you have to add designer paper to every page of your um, 
passport book. Some of them are great, um, just left blank. Now the pocket that I just shared with you is a pretty simple one. It's just a piece of cardstock and it has adhesive on the left, the right, and on the bottom. But another type of pocket that I also like to add to my passport books is a pocket that can hold a little bit more ephemera. And this is um, how I create those pockets. So essentially what you wanna do is you wanna figure out the size of your pocket and then you're gonna want to score um, just enough to tuck under. My score lines are usually about a fourth of an inch. So when you are creating your pocket, depending on the size that you want, you want to add a fourth of an inch um, on both sides. So at your, basically you're adding a half an inch. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to cut the little corner um, at the bottom because when you fold these pockets, you don't wanna have the bulk on the corner. Now another tip that I also have is when you are creating these little pockets, you wanna cut the bottom uh, corners at a diagonal, so that way when you fold your card, um, you again, you won't have the bulk. Also, if your pocket tends to be a little bit deep, you may want to take a uh, circle punch and cut out part of the circle on the top so you have a little opening to help remove any of the items that you might stick in your pocket. Now, I did use designer paper on this pocket, um, but it doesn't have a, a very distinct design. Um, and this is going to be a um, wine themed passport book. So I decided to add a little bit of designer paper to just add a little bit more design to my pocket. Um, so at this point, it really is your choice. Again, these passport books are personal. You can de decorate them as any way that you want to. Um, and again, I just chose to add a little bit more design to my pocket. Now, another type of pocket that you can create for your passport books are side pockets. And these side pockets are exactly as they sound. They're little pockets where you can tuck ephemera on uh, to the side of the card. These are just like the pockets that we created for the um, bottom of the page, but they are attached to the side. So my pockets usually are about two inches in um, width, and I just measure it against the height, and then I cut it, and I typically will round my corners. And then I'm gonna add my red line adhesive to the um, side as well as the top and the bottom. These little side pockets are great for journaling cards, and that's usually what I'll use them for. Um, I'll add some journaling cards where you can easily put them in and pull them out, and they're great places to add little notes and then tuck them away in the side pocket. Now, another way that I decorate my passport books, of course, are with my rubber stamps. And I just wanted to share with you a few of stamps that really work well for the travel books. Um, Tim Holtz always is a good choice for travel stamps. He has some great sets, and um, as you know, I'm a really big Tim Holtz fan, so I have lots of his stamp sets. And then I also have a few other sets that work really well for my passport books. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video and put on some music while I decorate my passport pages. And then I'll be back um, to walk you through binding the signatures to the base of the book.
So as you can see, stamping is a really easy way to personalize your passport books. And um, you can essentially use any type of stamps that you might have in your stash. I tend to have a lot of travel theme stamps. And like I said, I've been creating these passport books for a while now. So I have a lot of uh, stamps that look like uh, images that might, you might find in an actual passport book. Um, I really love making these books and um, I just thought it was time for me to share with you some of my thought process in how I decorate these. All right, so once you have all of your signature pages decorated, it's time to actually bind your book. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to walk you through this, um, but it really is pretty easy. Because you have three signatures to attach, you're going to want to cut uh, three pieces of twine. And I usually eyeball it, but it's about um, 14 to 15 inches. It's a little bit um, larger than a ruler. Um, and again, if you just kind of eyeball it and keep in mind that you might want to do a bow, uh, you'll be able to figure out how much twine that you need. And then you're going to take your twine and you're going to just simply thread it through the holes. I sometimes will use two different colors of twine just to add a little bit of variety um, because when you are finished um, adding your signatures, you're gonna have your uh, twine in the back of the book. And sometimes if you have two different colors of twine, it just makes a nice, a nice aesthetic look. And then once you have your signatures um, with the twine through the signatures, you're gonna go ahead and add them right to your base of your book. Now, the first one is always the easiest to add. Um, it gets a little bit more difficult when you're having to um, hold your first signature in place while threading your second one. Now, I use the word difficult loosely because it really isn't that difficult. You just have to keep in mind that you haven't tied off your twine yet on your first signature. So you're gonna wanna just make sure you hold it in place so it doesn't unthread. Um, if it does unthread, it's not the end of the world. You will just need to rethread it. Uh, but just keep that in mind when you are adding your second and your third signature. And then you're gonna want to adjust your string so that way it measures about the same on each side. So here I am adding my third signature. And again, it's the same as the first and the second. I'm just taking my uh, twine, I'm threading it through the holes, and then I'm going to add it to my uh, third slots. Now, one thing you want to make sure when you are uh, threading your signatures into your book is keep in mind you want to pay attention to the direction of your signatures. Um, you can easily add these upside down and then you're gonna just have to unthread them. Um, that's not a big deal, but if you just kind of pay attention the first time, then you won't have to go through the hassle of pulling out the thread and rethreading it. Um, yes, I've done it. It's not that big of a deal, <laughs> but if you just take a minute to line up your pages, make sure that they're right side up, um, then you won't have to redo it. And then finally, once you are finished threading all three of your signatures, you're gonna to wanna to pull your string tight and tie a knot so that way they will uh, stay in place. Now, once you have your knot, um, your book pretty much is secure. So at this point, if you wanted to add a charm um, on the back of your book, you could easily do that. If you wanted to tie your twine into a bow, um, you could also do that as well. Or if you just wanna leave it knotted and have the strings loose, that's fine as well. I've also used ribbon to tie um, my signatures, um, but keep in mind when you do use ribbon, it's gonna be a little bit thicker in between your pages. Um, and when you're adding um, four pages and three signatures, your book is pretty thick as it is, so you may not wanna add the ribbon. But there's no steadfast rule saying that you have to have four pages per each signature you can have as little as one. Sometimes when I use graphic 45 paper, um, because that paper is a little bit thicker, I may only create one page for each signature and then I will um, embellish it. Um, some of the embellishment with the graphic 45, of course, is those chipboards. And your pages can get a little bit uh, thick just using some of that chipboard as added embellishment. All right, and then finally um, on my passport books, sometimes I like to add uh, little titles or little notes on the outside just to indicate what it is. On some of my books, I just put simply journal, um, travel journal, but on this particular one, I put travel notes. Um, but again, that is your choice. Um, it's your book. You can decorate it as uh, any way that you want to. 
All right, so hopefully I've given you some good ideas on how to decorate and create a passport book. Um, like I said, I've been creating these books for several years now, so they come secondhand to me, and it is a little bit more difficult when I'm trying to create one on video, but I know I was asked to do that, and I wanted to provide that for you. Um, I will leave a link of all the products that I've used to create this book um, and the links to the stores below. I'll also um, give you a link in my description below um, if you want to purchase a kit. I know some of these C6 die cuts can be a little expensive and having all the paper to create a passport book uh, can get a little expensive. So I decided to put together a few kits um, and sell them in my Etsy shop. Um, and that way you too can create a passport book. Now for the giveaway. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, it is my birthday today. So um, I thought I would do a couple of giveaways. So in order to qualify for the drawing, um, you have to be a subscriber to my channel and also leave a comment below. Um, if you've already celebrated your birthday this year, let me know how you celebrated your birthday. And if you haven't celebrated your birthday yet this year, let me know what you hope to do for your birthday. Now, um, let's see, what should I give away? Um, okay, I'll go ahead and I'll give away two gift certificates. And both gift certificates will be for $15 each. The first gift certificate will be from Canvas Corp Brands. Um, and then the second gift certificate will be from scrapbook.com. And then I'll also give away two of my passport kits. So in total, I'll be giving away four prizes. Um, and again, all you need to do is be a subscriber to my channel and leave me a comment letting me know how you celebrated your birthday this year or how you hope to celebrate your birthday later on in the year. I'll go ahead and I'll keep the drawing open for a couple of weeks and then um, I'll come back mid uh, next month and I'll go ahead and I'll announce the winner. Uh, so I would appreciate you giving me a thumbs up and if you have enjoyed the video, um, I would really appreciate it if you would share it. Um, many of you may not know that I support my YouTube channel through my affiliate links. So the more people that actually see my videos, it really helps me to be able to get the newest product and share with you some of my designs and my ideas. So I really, really appreciate you supporting my channel and all your kind comments. And also for those of you that feel that creating your own passport book might be a little bit more work than you wanna dive into, I do have some completed passport books and my Etsy shop. So I'll also leave links to those below. Um, so you'll have links to um, the shop that has the kits where you can create your own passport book and then also the completed passport books. All right, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you again next time.